The House Select Committee on January 6th has brought on broadcast heavy hitter and former ABC News president James Goldston as an unannounced advisor for Thursday's primetime televised hearings. Axios reports that Goldston is producing the event as a, quote, blockbuster investigative special, including live witnesses, pre-cut segments, deposition footage, and previously never-before-seen surveillance video from the Capitol. You re may remember James Goldston from the last time he made news. As President Goldston was a key figure in ABC News' decision to bury Amy Robach's 2015 reporting on sex abuse allegations against Jeffrey Epstein and Prince Andrew. So I guess this will be quite the spectacle. Um, We'll be paying attention somewhat because it is news and, and should be covered, but perhaps not treated with this kind of uh, either reverential or or reality TV style. I mean, I don't know. I don't know what there is even new to learn about it at this time. That's my well, criticism of this ongoing. Never before seen footage. We'll see. Look, to the extent that this is supposed to be an optics you know, an optical bonanza where we're, liberals are trying to remind people about the dangers of the Trump era and the threat to democracy and all of these kinds of things. Why you would make the optics blunder of getting someone involved who is behind suppressing these really important Me Too stories that, again, liberals have made a really important prong of the moral case for why liberals should be in charge over conservatives. Yeah. I don't get it. Yeah, it's pretty <laughs> baffling. I don't, I, over and over again, there is this impunity that these liberal networks take toward what they, you know, not rules for thee and not for me. And they know how conservatives are going to latch on to having a figure like this involved. Why, you know, they, liberals have made so many legitimate criticisms of kind of sexist culture that exists. Fox News obviously went through the ringer with the Ailes debacle and Megyn Kelly and all of that that went down over there. This is a potential high road moment for liberals with respect to some of this Me Too stuff and also with respect to January 6th, which was and should have been a complete and total debacle for conservatives to have people storming the Capitol in their name right. as they claim to be Very the law bad. and order party. However, now I suspect the story is going to be about the guy running it, producing it, having been the person who suppressed these really important stories from the Me Too era. Stories that even conservatives agree, Je you know, this isn't one of these Me Too French cases, this is Jeffrey Epstein and Prince Andrew, which is really a story about power, privilege, and elitism, not just about Me Too. I think that's completely accurate, but beyond that, I just don't understand what the point is. This, this is not a mystery to unravel anymore. Like, we, we know what happened on January 6th, and I... I absolutely think Trump deserves a considerable amount of moral blame for saying things about the election for weeks that were not true and then speaking to an angry gathered crowd about those things and then encouraging some sort of action to take place not exactly not the exact thing that happened but it was a it was a mob that got out of control after being riled up by Donald Trump that is very clearly what happened. He should be blamed for that. Uh, they tried to hold him accountable for that. The vote failed. It's over. What more can you do? I don't think it was illegal conduct. I think it was unpresidential, and he should have not been able to be president. He should have been removed from office, but it didn't happen. So there's not more. It, it's like with the Mueller report or the end or Russia gate. There's some new wrinkle we're going to find. We're going to learn, oh, he was secretly being coordinated by Vladimir Putin or something. No, we already know the thing. It was a bad thing he did because he's an arrogant careless person when he talks and his he had a core base of very and, and then now even 95 percent or more of the people there didn't do anything wrong they were just protesting as sure. they're totally allowed to do and I, some of the prosecutions of the people who did go in ha, have gotten uh, pretty uh, out of hand and how you know whole, i mean I, I don't even want vicious violent criminals held in solitary confinement for sure. months it's a cruel thing to do to people and, and, and should not be done and should not be done in these cases but it's like that's, we don't. We're not going to. We've solved the mystery. They're it's still not a to make mystery. Fetch happen, and and that is a, a problem. But it's, it's partly because Democrats can't come up with anything new. Now right. Republicans do this too. Obviously, they make a new boogeyman every week. You know, today right. it's groomers. Tomorrow it's a trans person. Uh, you know, and it's right. never. It's all a big stage show distraction from the fact that, as we talked about in another segment today, half of American families can't feed it their is. children. Gas prices are through the roof, and on right. and on and on. And, and, th and this is a stage show distraction from the fact that those things are happening under Democratic rule, and Democrats That's, aren't doing anything about it. That's correct. That's yeah. correct. Um, but you know. <laughs>
here we are. Stay tuned. <laughs> <laughs> well, Thursday's hearings will come off the heels of four major arrests in connection to the riots. The Department of Justice has charged four men as part of the Proud Boys gang with seditious conspiracy. Former leader Enrique Tarrio and three other men face uh, up to as many as 20 years in federal prison uh, if convicted of seditious conspiracy. You know, and, and to think that I like the, they very well might go to prison for long periods of time. For what? Like, what was the cause that they thought that this is for, for the glory of a man who doesn't, who could not care less about them being in prison? Yeah, um, well, not going to do anything for them. So I, I feel yeah. it, there's almost a level of. I feel bad for them. They're so well, it's a little, misled or deranged. But I, and I feel bad for pathetic. people who are. It is pathetic. I, I, let me ask you this, though, devil's advocate. Yeah. It is true that there does not seem to be, you know, this issue is not moving the needle for anybody politically. Either right. you're very much offended uh, by January 6th, you think it's the worst thing that's yeah. happened since 9-11, or maybe some people have said it's worse than 9-11, or you don't give a, a fig because you care about other things, some legitimate things or some illegitimate things. But why is that the case? Do you think that it is odd or says something about America that we do have these kind of bizarre images of people storming the Capitol and smoke billowing out, you know, you know, less, you know, a month or so after the election, you had, you know, people armed sitting at Nancy Pelosi's desk filing through papers. You had a, a, a woman shot and killed on the grounds. You had threats to hang the vice president of the United States, Trump's vice president out in front of the White House. And it doesn't seem to move the needle at all. Do you think that, you know, part of why the Democrats keep trying to foreground this issue is almost a disbelief that this is where the country is, that that is not at all engaging as, an, as even a media spectacle at this point? Look, I, I'm on the record for saying it was really bad. I, obviously, it is not 9-11 or anything close. It was an embarrassing spectacle. It, it was a... a it's hypocritical because Republicans always said, well, we would never riot. We would never right. do anything like this. Well, you absolutely did, you liars. Yeah. You did exactly what you said you would never. I was you know, assured during the month of rioting that took place, the summers, uh, the summer in, in D.C., there was rioting that Republicans would never do this. Yeah, yes, you did. You absolutely did. Well, there are. But I, so I put it, just to answer your question, I put it in the con a, a similar continuity of behavior from the, the rioting that engulfed my city, for uh, for weeks over a course of a year with this city yes this city uh, in and, well and that was happening in all sorts of other cities and many worse uh, riots that took place but I, I just saw what happened here firsthand and it was really bad when the leftists came through and did all that and then the right came through and did the same thing and people should stop doing that stop I, storming I mean, I, buildings I stop setting things on fire <laughs> stop defacing public monuments stop just go home and don't do that I mean, I was also here in 2020, but I don't know that I would characterize it in that way. But I think that what defenders of, you know, conservatism and the right or say is that there is a quality of difference between those two things. And they don't see the, I've seen people make this argument, they don't see the January 6th rioters as equivalent at all to the George Floyd rioters. And I think that this Neighborhoods is part of were it. burned, not in D.C., I mean, but other, in other places, the country, neighborhoods were burned. I think that part of the issue is that what's really driving how you perceive this. I mean, I would argue that breaking into a federal building, you know, with the intent of hurting, you know, literally killing the president, the vice president of the United States, and all these other kinds of things, is a very serious crime. Of course, including among, especially among conservatives who think that those kind of violations of hallowed ground, of federal ground, of of elected officials of police killing, you know, attacking police officers to be really the height of impropriety. But I, I, the point I'm trying to get at is that it's all being driven ideologically. Nobody cares about rioters. It's not that rioters are good or bad. It's not that shooting people is good or bad. When you look at how people view Kyle Rittenhouse differently from, you know, someone like Philando Castile who was shot because he was armed, mm -hmm. legally armed in, in his car, basically because he was poor and just pulled over so many times he eventually had a negative interaction with the police. When it, None of it is really about these broad principles. First Amendment, Second Amendment. It should be about these broad but it, but principles. It's not. It, you're right. It, 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 it is not. for me. People it's not so for a lot of people, but it is for me. I'm consistently, consistently against riots. I'm consistently for illegal gun I, ownership. I, uh, the Philando Castile is a horrible miscarriage of justice. And I, I also was. Right. But so most people are. And I just think that the conversation.
conversations would be so much more fruitful if we could just talk about our ideological commitments because there's nothing wrong with having ideological commitments. But we're never able to get to the main point of the issue because people who frankly aren't really qualified, myself included, I'm no constitutional scholar, qualified to be debating the finer points of what is constitutional and what is permissible under the law are doing that instead of saying, I care about police violence or I care about um, you know, whatever critique I have of the Democratic Party and therefore think that 1-6 was justified or I think the election was stolen. Let's have a substantive conversation about what those underlying priors are instead of having these proxy battles in I think, the media. I think people should try to resolve their intellectual contradictions by being more consistent and less hypocritical. I think conservatives who, uh, who you know, rail against the Antifa terrorists who are destroying our streets and then like, oh no, this was just a political protest, this is fine, being totally hypocritical and need to like fix that contradiction. I think people on the progressive side who, who think this was right, nine, this was nine, a 9-11 that occurred organized by Republicans, but don't care at all about any of the protesting that destroyed public property or private property or, ha or harmed people that went on uh, during the summer also need to solve that. Was the Tea Party wrong? The Boston Tea Party? Was the Boston, uh, I thought you were going to ask me if the 2000, <laughs> was the Boston Tea Party wrong? Was, uh, was that destruction of violence to property? Like, I, I, I would have probably been against it at the time. I, I don't have a dog in the fight. All I'm honest. saying is that it's, it's not, not about, sure I, would have I don't think it. you have to believe the right outcome is the same in every case. I don't think you have to blanket say protesting is wrong and resolve those contra contradictions. I think you just have to make a case for why you think it's appropriate in certain circumstances. That's, that's, my, yeah. that's my case I'm sticking you to. Try to be consistent. <laughs> More consistency is good. Well, we will have more rising after this. That's consistent, because we always do.